to the Chai Chat Podcast, solutions for empowered living, engaging, educating, empowering. Each week, your host, Tarun Puri, author of Finding the Guru Within, and Steve Harvey, mindset mentor to A-list celebrities and stars, bring a combined expertise of over six decades in mentoring, coaching, and inspiring positive solutions to the negatives which keep us stuck and unhappy. With a focus on solutions versus problems, in each episode, they discuss topics relevant to the human condition, which challenge us from moving forward into positive growth and ultimate freedom. Through stream of consciousness, unscripted dialogue and inquiry, they provide practical, deep, and actionable insights to support you in creating and living a happy, successful, fulfilled life. Join us each week and learn how to access your own inner GPS, your guru positioning system, which comes preset with all the solutions you need for empowered living. Living a life of ease versus effort is only a thought away. Let us show you what works and what doesn't. Welcome to Chai Chat, the podcast, episode one. My name is Tarun Puri. And I'm Steve Harvey. And we're so excited, aren't we, Steve? Sure, it's, uh, sure. it's been quite a journey uh, in getting here, and now here we are. We want to welcome all of our friends out there in podcast land who are joining us for this podcast. Uh, today, we want to speak a little bit about ourselves uh well, because we can, but apart from that, to introduce ourselves a little bit and give you a little bit of a context as to uh, why we have chosen to do a podcast and why maybe at this time um, on the planet and where we come from um, in our own uh, relationship um, so that you have a context for what we have to share with each other. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, sharing a lot of cool insights with you uh, and speaking today about the series here that we're launching uh, uh, of the From Reset to Renewal and of course a little bit more about uh, why we chose uh, the title for this first episode to be Finding the Guru Within uh, the Great Reset. Um, so hey Steve, what, 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 do we, uh, what do we want to tell them about us that uh, we can? Uh, well, I think, you know, we we go back uh, a long time. Um, I think we've been buddies for, in this lifetime, we've been buddies for over 30 years. And uh, during the course of that time, we've had some amazing conversations about all aspects of, of life. Uh, and um, oftentimes, after we've had those conversations, uh, and both of us have felt this way, um, God, why did we record that? You know, there was some real good little tidbits of wisdom there that um, I'm sure other people could have benefited from. Um, so this, this has given, you know, our viewers or listeners an opportunity to be the fly on the wall, so to speak, uh, to peer in and listen in to our conversation. And hopefully, you know, they can take away some... some um, Yes, what I've always so, enjoyed about our our three decade long plus for, uh, friendship in this lifetime, and is that you know we can we can converse in in a in such an interestingly open and um, inquisitive manner. I love having conversations with you because I learn so much. Actually, I'm I'm someone who feels that we are constantly learning from everyone we meet. To me, everyone is my teacher. And as a professional speaker, prior to going on stage even, I always do a quick little reset prayer. And part of my prayer is a giving of gratitude to every person in the audience who I consider to be my teacher, although I'm the one who they've come to listen to. So likewise, I found that every time you and I get into an unscripted dialogue and you know, I pop a question to you or, or I'm dealing with an issue and uh, with myself or for a client or a family member or, you know, all the myriad of things that life brings to us, you always have a very interesting insight or a spin on it, which then gets me thinking in a certain direction. And I think that dialogue that we end up in sometimes goes on for an hour without us even recognizing, oh my gosh, what just happened? And 
a lot of times in the middle of that, I'm like, why aren't we recording this? Because we couldn't have scripted or somehow contrived um, an aha. And aha happens because it's gifted to us in the process of inquiry. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, I'm a great believer, right? You know, like you said, when you start speaking, um, something that I've been doing myself is I, I surrender and say, whatever needs to be said will be said, and whatever needs to be heard will be heard. And that gets me out of the road then, um, and I can allow it to come through because, you know, I, I really believe that when we tap into that higher power wisdom um, coming through us, um, what gets said is far greater than anything I could ever come up with. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I do the same thing, but I came at it from another angle because I was trained in energetics as one of the to tons of things that I've trained in because, like you, I'm a... a I love knowledge. I'm, I'm, I, I can't learn enough quick enough. So I've studied so many things, but my training in energetics uh, happened um, to show me how to connect with higher power within each of us that has so much insight and guidance available. And so my key tool and technique that I had to train myself to do was when you came to me for help, it was to get out of the way. Uh, I, I basically became the messenger for the wisdom. So sometimes it's frustrating because we're in a session and and uh, I'll say something and believe it or not, it can be quite brilliant. And uh, <laughs> but who is the most surprised is me. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was brilliant. Please, somebody quickly note that down. Hopefully the client has noted it down because two minutes later, if you ask me what I said, I won't remember. So that I know that oftentimes things get said exactly the way they need to be said, the right words, the right context, the right phrasing. And I can't tell you how many countless times a person says, I cannot believe you chose that example yeah. because... I was just at the park and I was on a slide or, you know, I was just at a restaurant and, you know, and then you use the example of. And so, again, it's not something that I have to pre-think about when, before you come to me for a session because I don't know where we're going to go. But I trust that mm -hmm. that connection that I have honed. Yeah, I think we're both in agreement with, um, we've discussed this in the past, that um you know, oftentimes we think that what's coming through and what we're saying, giving advice to our clients is for them. And we forget that it's our ears that are closest to our mouth. And so after a while, you start to realize, wait a minute, who's that message really for? You know, I remember having, I remember having six clients in a row. Um, we both, you know, have the little deck of cards, the gift cards. And every single client picked the exact same card. Yes. And my, yes. my immediate thought was, how come I keep attracting these clients for the same issue? And then the light finally went on and I realized, wait a minute, I'm reading the, the you know the passage in the book for them when I should really be reading it for myself. Well, and the moment <laughs> I did that, I stopped attracting clients for that issue. Well, I mean, no, but no, this, look, in Chicago, I, I, in this situation, I've traveled so extensively, but I'll never forget this one week in Chicago. You know, I fly in with everything in hand and I'm available to do private consults. And so um, I start uh, uh, one or two people testing the water, right? And I do a session or two. And I think the, um, um, the theme that was coming up for these people was focus, like, the difference between centering and focus and, and and how to be really centered in our being from which you can access everything neutrally. And, and then I create these formulas uh, with oils and one's called the focus formula. And I was prescribing that, saying that this could really help you to achieve as a tool to help you to remember to stay centered and grounded rather than getting focused, which is getting very narrow. And so that's yeah. fine. You have a client with that. The next morning I had another client and same message. And, um, and and these clients went home and said, oh my gosh, this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. So they said, started sending their friends. 
Well, by about the sixth or seventh session, I started feeling a little paranoid because I thought they're going to compare notes. And they're going to say, Tarun came with a pre-recorded session and he's telling us all the same thing. I wasn't doing it on purpose, but we never get a client or at least my, no, I'm going to state it. We never have someone in our lives that isn't there to mirror back something that we need to be reminded of that we ourselves are not looking at or are, are somehow suppressing, repressing, depressing, compressing. Um, we never meet a client that is a mirroring a theme or an energy that we need to look at within ourselves. So to me, the greatest gift in my career of 35 years plus of working one-on-one -on -one with individuals has been being able to see myself through them, if that makes sense. And then it's a win-win because uh, oftentimes people get great solutions to their issues, but it's not me. It's the energy that comes through. It's the insight. And it's, it's then uh, comes down to applying that knowledge. Yeah, it's the gift of all our mirrors. You know, they'll say, yes. mirror, 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 just like me. You're the one to set me free. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I think, you know, sometimes if you think of those fairy tales and you think, somebody was really on to something here, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and but you're right. When we can put it into the big context, it's like when I can look in my own mirror and really look, who and what do I see? And I can only yeah. see what I put out there into the world because all the psychologists will tell you that, that the world is essentially a function of our perception of it. I mean, even psychology right. has got that now earmarked. And of course, if you go back 5,000 or 10,000 or whatever thousands of years, um, it's been written in the most ancient books that uh, this whole world is simply a perception of yeah. yours. Okay, so, okay, we won't, we won't get too crazy deep on, on this now, but I, I, I think that also what's very interesting for me and a little thing that people need to really recognize with you is that uh, from what I've seen is that you are also somebody who just hungers for knowledge and you're constantly um, looking at what's new or what's being said differently or from what perspective can something be looked at, what tools, what techniques basically to help people to connect uh, with themselves and become empowered. And you've had the opportunity to do this so brilliantly um, in the real world, on the front lines, uh, Initially, when you ran your own practice uh, as an Ayurvedic trained practitioner from the Chopra Institute and, um, and for many years and seeing, um, you know, everyday uh, folks like me uh, off the street, as you'd say. And the reason, of course, I'm saying that is and then and then you hit the big time. And I know that for over the last 20 years, you've taken your expertise, your expertise and knowledge of spas and, and wellness and, and, and integrative mind management strategies and and uh, you got the opportunity worldwide to work um, uh, uh, not only work but go and set up in these high-end six seven star resort properties where uh, the 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 a-list celebrities go and the the really very well-known people who need privacy and who go to get recentered and to to find themselves you've actually gone you have advised, consulted, set up programs, trained staff, as well as being a head um, a master consultant to many of these people. So you've been able to take all the things that you have learned in the books and apply not only to yourself, but in real life situations and with some very highly accomplished people, uh, very well off, well known, and might I say very rich people, how, how did you dare? Like, yeah, I mean, I think it was interesting. Um, I remember the first time meeting celebrities, and uh, I was I was in awe, I was starstruck, same as most people. But then I quickly realized that there was no way I could help them as long as I was putting them on a pedestal. But wow. I was I was maximizing them and minimizing myself relative to them. And I thought, you know, they're not going to listen to me. So I thought, and I also noticed that when I recognized them, they changed and they started 
being the celebrity. Wow. Whereas when, when I didn't recognize them, they were just a regular human being. Are you telling so, me that you gave them permission just to be themselves as a human being first by not expecting them to be the persona that exactly. they get paid yeah. so well to be? Yeah, exactly. Wow. And, and they're not used to that, you know, because everywhere they go, they're recognized and people are looking for a piece of them, so to speak. Yes. Um, and so when they meet someone who's just accepting them for who they are as a human being, first and foremost, uh, then a lot of the defenses come down, you know, and it's only when I can meet them from a heart-centered connection can I possibly assist them on their journey. As long as I put them on a pedestal, I'm of no use to them. So in my so, language, you shifted out of human consciousness and went soul to soul with a hello. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think and, that's and, why... I think that's why I was so successful with them um, is because of that. Uh, it's because I, I'm able to see beyond the facade of the, you know, the A-list celebrity or rock star or world champion athlete and see them for who they truly are and, uh, and then partner with them, you know, in this journey of inquiry and exploration and, um, and to assist them you know, and uh, there's nothing more rewarding than and, being and, able to and, have that connection. I mean, I, I, you know, in a sense, it might sound like a silly question, but it's probably in the minds of many people. So do they kind of have some of the same issues that you and I may have, or um, are they special? I mean, you know, because uh, according to me, they have everything. They've got, you know, looks, they've got talent, they've got, you know, wine, women, and song, right? I mean, typical, <laughs> sort of, so what would be lacking in their lives, right? Uh, because I wish I had what they had. I wish I, uh, you know, if only I had what they had, then I would be happy is what the way I tend to think. And I'm waiting yeah. for my break. And so here are the people who presumably had their break, have got all the things that you and I or many of us may think we, you know, need. And nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to find out. Yeah. So how were they different? Or were they? Not really. You know, I like to say there's no, no new thoughts that are recycled. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's easy looking at them from the outside, looking in. And the, the perception is that they've got, you know, the, the everything together, so to speak. Um, but they're no different than you and I. You know, they're, they all have the same uh, goals and challenges and perceived obstacles in the road. Um, yeah, certainly they, the one thing I did notice with a lot of them is that they seem to move beyond their challenges or obstacles quicker. They don't tend really? to dwell on that. They seem to have an ability to focus on the solution, what's the wished outcome. And the one thing that many of them have asked the question of is, what makes them so successful, and it was because they they already saw it in their mind. You know, and as Bob Proctor says, whatever the mind can conceive can achieve, and so each day they would have a ritual, if you like, of looking at, say, it's a list of who is it they want to be doing have that day, or what is it they want to be doing have, and and then going about the day, and at the end of the day, every day revisiting that list and asking themselves what did i do today and how was i being today that took me to closer to my goals and what took me further away and they would eliminate the stuff that was distracting and focus again the next day and so that takes discipline and i think that's one of the things that they do have uh, that sets them apart from you know say the average human being is mm -hmm. it, that sense of discipline well, uh, you know, what you've just spoken there, Steve, to me is gold. I mean, that last yeah. couple of minutes there again, see, because by by saying to me that basically they have the same human-based challenges and issues as 
you and I, and, and you know, I don't know about you, but over my career, I've just brought it down to like four or five things, you know, warmth, belonging, acceptance, right? Like we're programmed yeah. for certain needs. Yeah. But, but beyond that, what you said to me is yet they seem to um, uh, move through things and change their circumstances because they focus on the solution. And isn't that interesting? Because over the years of work that I've done primarily on yours truly here as being my primary client and and yeah. man, if I, you know, and, and then working with um, family, friends, working with uh, thousands of clients over the last four, over four decades, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I, I have, you know, to me, that's one thing that came crystal clear was that which you focus upon expands. And therefore, as you see, the, 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 the tagline for this podcast is solutions for empowered living. Yeah. Because it is so critical that we constantly remind ourselves that we have a choice. We can focus on the problem or we can focus on the solution. And it is the rule. It is, it is the, it, you know, I find that the world is designed to keep us focused on the problems. Right. Yes. You know how it is. You know, it, it, it's. It's it's the mind has a way of looking at a negative and becoming obsessed with it rather than all the other positives that may be available. Okay, so so therefore, the inquiry of the mind uh, is so key here. So I love it that you've been able to go and work on the front line with the who's who on the planet and along with daily uh, celebrities you've been out with. Um, billionaires and rock stars and i mean i'm just saying that you've had such an interesting mix of uh, major shakers and players in the world who have put major companies on the uh, uh, on the map that we use daily uh, many people resource and you've been able to talk to them and learn from them so i'm really looking forward to sharing with our friends a lot of insights and stories and and maybe even a few secrets uh that that uh, uh, uh you know um, may help us all move forward um, in recognizing how, um, you know, we may be closer to a solution than we think. And the only difference yeah. is that we haven't taken the moment to consider that sometimes a solution is closer to us than our own breath, but we're too busy everywhere else, right? So- Too busy focusing so on the problem. Yes, that's right. So that, yeah. again, to just reiterate, so um, I feel that, oh, that's good chai. Um, I feel that, um, uh, you know, the whole idea of framing um, our journey together here has been so important. And, um, you know, for me, the solutions for empowered living made total sense, even as a subtitle for the book um, that I've just finished uh, finding the guru within. And that whole book was quite a journey because the book was something that I was um, in my guidance, my meditations kind of prompted by higher power to write 12, 13 years ago, but I wasn't really interested in adding another book to the market. I figured there's plenty and when everybody's finished their, them, then maybe I'll add one. I wasn't interested in adding more noise, if you will. Um, yeah. And uh, and I had other focuses, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> other things to focus on. And, uh, you know, it's all energy that you have to invest. However, fast forward nine years, and I think the universe had had enough of my dragging my feet. So I mm -hmm. ended up committing to that process, which I read about in the first chapter of my book um, yeah. called How I Got My Dental Plan. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, but, but the whole idea is interesting because I remember specifically speaking to a colleague of mine um, at a bookstore and she was very accomplished in self-help and she knew about my reputation in helping people. And she said to me, you should write a book. And I said, oh no, who have you been speaking to? My mom, right? Right, or, 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 or uh, you know, and I thought, why, why is this coming at me again? And she goes, no, I think, you know, you have a lot to share. And I said, well, I'll tell you something. I think a book will be written when the timing is right. And, but when I think about it, what would be my core message? What, what is it that I have recognized over at that time, the past 25 to 30 years of working with individuals? What is the common theme that I've seen all of humanity that most of our issues come down to, okay? 
And I said to her, I said, to me, distilling every issue down, whether you are a multimillionaire investor who's come to me for help or some kind of a celebrity, or if you've been you know, a housewife, a house husband, a five-year-old or a 50-year-old acting like a five-year-old, it's always interesting that when we work through the issues, which are necessary, I distill that ultimately each and every time the solution was always there when we recognized that it was an inside job. That everything that I thought was happening to me, being done to me, not done, in, not done for me, not done to me, should have been done to me, could have been, why did it happen to me? Why hasn't it happened yet? Um, 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 right? Like, I mean, it's just ad uh, infinitum. It's just, it didn't matter. Um, every time I worked through the process of inquiry, I found that at the end of the day, the solution that I so desperately was seeking, I always had within me. And going deeper, I recognized that ultimately all of us come pre-programmed with an inner GPS. And I call that our guru positioning system. You have yours, I have mine. Okay, yeah. each one of your clients has theirs. And that is such a brilliant program that came with us when we came onto this planet for the short journey called life, that it has all the maps and all the solutions pre-programmed for us, for anything that has ailed us or that could ail us. And the biggest error that we were making in our judgment that we were doing it backwards. We were actually looking for our solutions outside of ourselves. And every time I did that, I had strife, struggle, conflict, blame, anxiety, depression, resentment. You get the message. So yeah. every time when I did my meditations, I got shown that all this time I had a guide, a mentor, a best friend that was always with me. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea and I had abandoned them. I would ignored them. And that's my inner guru. So yeah. therefore, the book helped me to galvanize those thoughts and provide a template which talked about my direct experiences as well as the great tools and techniques that many we have shared uh, that, that work uh, to help an individual reclaim their power, become empowered again by not giving it away to the outside world. And so that's where I think the power of this journey together is going to be that every time we speak and in this from reset to renewal, we're going to be able to explore aspects of this and bring it right back to that point where you already have the answers. They were always with you. Are you willing to take what I call the epic journey without distance? See, it's easy because it's a journey yeah. without distance. You don't ever have to leave home. Yeah. And, and so to me, every time I've been able to remember or be reminded and resource within, solutions about yeah, and you discover that nothing is ever in the in the way it's always on the way you know? thank you and yes that, that's the beauty of it so my my hope and dream for this um, podcast is that we can inspire and 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 you know draw out that 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 the curiosity in each and every one of our friends out there to go a bit deeper, to take that journey without distance, to start the pilgrimage and get to know themselves. So the finding the guru within was very specifically um, aimed at that. And by the way, let me just be very clear about the guru. You know, I come from a very rich and deep heritage uh, uh, based in India. And um, my father was my first guru, uh, an amazingly astonishing wise man. 
Um, and I do like to uh, explain to person that a guru is somebody who's the dispeller of darkness or the remover of ignorance. And so we can have many gurus in our lives and they're good, they're false gurus and there's true gurus. Uh, and then there's the inner guru. So regardless of what I say, what Steve says, what any of us say, I want to encourage people through this podcast series to really um, consider what we have to say, but then make sure that it goes through your inner guru as your ultimate authority of what fits for you and what doesn't. And that's where your power will come from. If more and more of us can start doing that right now on the planet, then I think we will be well on our way to being in a much happier and uh, a, a more peaceful and enjoyable experience than we've had for the last couple of years. As you know, we have used the term in our title, the Great Reset. And to me, these past two years has touched us globally. And all of us have been impacted by this huge change that appeared to be thrust upon us from outside of us, which is debatable. And it, I don't know with your clientele, but with my clientele and even in my own processes, I've went through quite a process of processing to understand what's going on, why now, and what to make of it. And is it bad? Is it good? Is it right? Is it wrong? And, you know, it was very easy to get caught up in that little roller coaster for a while. Um, however, my experience in short, we'll go into this at many levels, has been that this last two years has been one of the most wonderful gifts of all time. Not easy, not fun, but very appropriate because it was like somebody put a pause button on, on the great hamster wheel of life. You know, I feel sometimes that we're like hamsters that just have to keep that that wheel turning. You know, we used to have these pet hamsters yeah. and yeah. they would run in the wheel. And it was like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if I stop running on that wheel? You know, all time will stop. The world will end. Things will fall apart. And we became such... Um, we became such a culture of human doings that for me, we forgot the art of being human. And to me, this pause was harsh, but necessary. And it just stopped us in our tracks. And I think it was a necessary stop. And like any hard stop, it's shocking. But I think without the shock, it would not have made me take a moment and go, oh, something has changed here. I better stop the madness of my ways and reconsider, uh, you know, have a look at the path I'm on and just see if it's still aligned with who I am mm -hmm. and with where I think I want to go and why. So over the last two years in brief, I got the opportunity to revisit myself and question everything at a deeper level. There's always levels and layers. So much that I had complacently accepted because it didn't um, seem important to me at the time or didn't seem to impact me. So therefore, why question it, right? Suddenly, it came out of nowhere and suddenly it was impacting me. And I had to question it now, which I think was very important. Because as a seeker of truth, uh, if I'm given enough compelling insights as they process through my inner knowing, my inner guru, I will change camps, I will change sides, and I will say I was wrong for the last 2,000 years. I have seen the light today, right? I'm not there to hold the light just because it's what I said. I'm here to be challenged to grow. And I have to confess that over the last couple of years, I've had to <clears throat> change side a few times in certain things and and say, well, I guess I was fooled. So I think at the end of this process now, I'm much deeper, I'm clearer, and I'm a much better person. So I, I think that at the end of the day, I am more authentic. 
um, and that I have learned to expand my awareness. But again, the whole process in staying sane in the midst of insanity was that I can anchor with the guru within. And every time I start losing it a little bit, um, because it's human, being in human consciousness means you're going to get caught up. But there are lots of tools and techniques and abilities and awarenesses that we'll explore together through which hopefully we can remind ourselves sometimes 50,000 times a day that I am not that. Yeah. Right. And so, who would we be without a story? You know? Yes, I love it when you say that. You know, let's talk yeah. a little bit about that because I think it's yeah. going to be a huge line in our in, in our discussions. See, that's to me. That's what I think of the the guru positioning system. You know, it's like a homeostat, a negative feedback loop that is designed to bring the conscious and the unconscious portions of your mind into balance. And I think most of the time, when we look at what's been going on in the world in the last couple of years. You know, I always like to use the analogy of the roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. Why is it some people can go on, you know, Magic Mountain at Disneyland and have the thrill of a lifetime, and other people go on that exact same ride and are scared to death? That's right. And what's yes. what's different? The only thing that's different is the story about it. And so many people are. It seems to me that many people have put their life on hold waiting for outside to change. It's right. kind of real realizing, well, what if I change my story about outside? What if I change my story about what's going on? What if I can find the gift in this, in this uh, whatever's going on? What's the gift in this situation? And I think yes. this is what I love what you said in your book. I'm going to read it. You said here, uh, the reason that peace talks are falling, are failing, is that we are attempting to create peace outside of ourselves, while internally we remain stuck in all patterns of thinking, behaving, and being conflicted. And so, you know, it's yes. that old saying: you know, we can't solve the problem at the same level of consciousness that's creating it. Um, and so, if we keep using these old tools. Uh, to look at the world around us right now, I think we're going to be tossed around in this ocean. Um, but when we can use some of the things that we'll be sharing uh, throughout the series, some of the tools that you and I have worked on ourselves that have helped us to grow and evolve, but also our clientele to grow and evolve. Um, and we know that they work because we've, you know, we've, we've been using them in the front line, as you say. Um, But I think when people can really get a handle on their story about what's going on in the world, um, then they can, uh, it can really be at peace with it and they can learn to love it. Um, It doesn't mean to say you have to accept it, but you can love it. And that's the starting point, you know, and when you can learn to love it, you can move forward in completeness and wholeness versus putting yourself worth yourself contentment, your happiness on hold, waiting for the outside world to change before you can be happy. And I see yes. so many people are caught up in that right now. Yeah, well, it's, it reminds me sometimes when I'm working with couples or I never work with them at the same time. Initially, I will see one, I see the other until I can, yeah, until it's safe to bring them to the same room. But I'll often hear, um, you know, <clears throat> one partner say, um, you know, um, uh, and often it's the ladies in this case. It's, um, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, it's been 18 years or 20 years or 21 years. And, uh, you know, he still doesn't remember my anniversary. <laughs> right? And I'm like, um, so what makes you think it's going to be any different in the 22nd year? Uh, just, just be, I'm not saying that's okay. And I will, I will give him heck for you. I promise you know, beat him over the head three times. But but while we're on the topic, for 18 or 20 or 21 years, you've had an expectation. And, uh, uh, and you know, the outcome has been a certain way. I, I would just really like to understand 
you know, why do you think, based on what, do you think it's going to be different the following year, right? So, um, I, and I say to them, I mean, are you looking for solutions or are you happy beating him over the head with the problem and reminding him, you know? Yeah, you want to be right. A solution, a solution would be, hey, honey, here's the 48-hour countdown, put it on your phone. <laughs> and exactly at midnight, you know, 48 hours, it's going to go bing. And that's going to, there'll be a list that will pop up and it will let you know exactly what to order where. And uh, just hit the button, and um, it'll be all good. And then I'll know you love me. Yeah. Right? Just like every, yeah, every year since I've known you, I got an email a week before it saying, my birthday's coming up, 4th of July. <laughs> Thank God, right? Yeah. I, I, I mean, don't forget it. <laughs> you better not ever forget my birthday. You see, but that's just, to me, that's just intelligent because you know the consequences. So all I'm saying is I'm not arguing with their outcome. Uh, I'm just saying that if it's important for you that he remembers, uh, then help him remember. Whether he remembers or not doesn't mean that he doesn't care or not. It just means that he doesn't remember. I mean, let's not make the story any more or any less, right? Yeah. And here's yeah. the other thing. I also found miracles happening when people let go of the need for somebody to remember when they accept Okay, and we'll have an episode on acceptance, the power of acceptance. Um, but when they accept, guess what happens? Um, they um, miracles because suddenly he remembers. How does that work? But the interesting thing that you were saying earlier on about you know the gift of all our mirrors is that they're upset because their partner's not remembering, and yet they're not remembering that the partner doesn't remember. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're right. There you go. That's the mirror of the relationship right there. There's the mirror. Yeah. So you could say, honey, don't you remember that I never remembered? Right? right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you see, again, it's a very simple, I want to say almost a mediocre example, but very, very apt because yeah. it's in the little things that, that, that we look at the, the, the issues. The issues are in the small things because they're the ones that, uh, are the strands of the larger issues that create the discontent, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, when I'm working in assisting a client, whether it's in a business or even an organization or one-on-one, -on -one, I always ask the same question um, after telling them that I'm not there to tell them they're right or wrong or they should do it my way. Why should they? Uh, yeah. However, we identify what they're doing, like expecting somebody to remember the year after. And then I just sit back very quietly after I hear their story and I just say to them, well, that's a, I understand your angst or I can see where some of the issues are here and I, I can help you map them out a little bit. But um, my question is before we move forward, can you answer one question? They go, sure. And I go, so how is it working? I think that's one of the most powerful questions we can ask ourselves and each other. Uh, because when I ask that, then I quietly, and yes, I can be quiet, so don't give me any feedback on that one, okay? Um, I can be quiet and I can listen, uh, but I just say, how's it working? And then I just sit quietly. Because it is really up to that individual to say, you know what? I wish it was working better or it really isn't working. Uh, and sometimes they'll even want to, the ego will want to jump in. And by the way, we have a great episode coming up on ego. The ego will want to jump in and say, well, it's working fine. I mean, I'm, you know, it's working because, and they'll, you know, they'll say, because at the end of the day, I, I do end up getting my wine and flowers and you are whatever. Okay. And it can work the other way, people. I don't want the ladies getting mad at me here. I have clients also that it works the other way. Mm -hmm. So, but this is just an illustration. Metaphorically speaking, it's like uh, I do get my way ultimately. And then I ask the second question, which is critical. And these two questions, by the way, I bring up in the middle of my book and then I just keep on bringing them up again and again for you to ask yourself, because the book is not about me. The book is about you. It's there to give you practical insights and how to apply some of the knowledge that we've gained and that has worked. But the second question is critical. What I ask in the second question is, 
They say, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's working. And I go, okay, I'll give you that, it's working. Could you please answer the second question, which most people never ask? And it's a very easy and simple question. Are you ready? At drum what? Roll. Yeah, get the drum roll. Where is the yeah, sound the department? Yeah. Where is the sound department when we need them in podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I need this podcast to be more perfect from the beginning. Okay, right. I think I think you're going to just have to work me through that one. But but the question, the second question says, how is it working? If somebody says, well, it's working, I managed to get taken out and wined and dined and even taken for a weekend, and I get my way. You know, I have to, and I go, and, that, and then I ask the question, and so okay, so at what cost? Yeah. See, most of us forget to ask that second question. We can make it work, which we'll talk about in our in our second episode on opening, you know, mm -hmm. we can make things work or we can get our way. We can get our way over time. But again, you know, between you and I, we, we do claim to have over, over six decades of combined experience. And I know you've seen the same thing that even though we get away with it, with ourselves, with, mm -hmm. e with each other, with, uh, in the bigger picture, we, you know, we end up fooling others. Maybe, maybe we look like we're happy. Maybe we fool ourselves into thinking we're getting our way and therefore we're happy or content or fulfilled. Uh, you know, we have a whole episode on that. But at the end of the day, um, the energies never align. And so sometimes we pay a very high price and end up yeah. at the end of this journey feeling very hollow and cheated. And if we're honest in the mirror, it's usually by it. We have cheated ourselves. Does that resonate? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we believe the lie. We believe the lie that people and situations should be different than what they are. There you go. Now there, that's a very powerful line. Yeah. It's a very powerful line. And what about the lie that we should be different? Right? Exactly. Bringing it up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I should have hair in my head. <laughs> What's that? What was that? I, I should have hair on my head. Is that true? <laughs> well, I, I don't think we have a podcast long enough to process that, so I'm not. I'm not going there. I know when not to go there too. It's years of experience and and a few burn marks, you know. Uh, but, but here's the thing. So, kind of looking at this first episode that we've putting together to invite our friends out there to join us in this in this journey from reset to renewal. We would like you to consider what if the Great Reset was the most wonderful invitation to go on a journey. And that journey can be in any form, but the difference this time, it's taking the journey without distance. So what if you took a 180 and that next time something happened in your world, somebody in your family, somebody in your neighborhood, somebody at work, the markets, the economy, fill in the blank. What if the next time you had a thought regarding something and you said to yourself, well, isn't that interesting? My thought is now anchoring to the outside and then coming in. What if I took this journey without distance and just for a moment thought, hmm, if it was from the inside out, how would I think about the situation? Or how would I choose to be in it? Yeah. And I think it's also realizing that, you know, everything that happens is a vital part of divine order. And when we tap into that, divinity within ourselves, you know, that's how we are able to find balance and blessings and see opportunities in everything that's going on. But as long as we play the blame game and think that it should be different or they should be different, uh, we can never see the, the hidden order and we can never see the, 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 the opportunities and the blessings. And so it's when we're able to equilibrate our lopsided perceptions about reality, uh, only then can we be left with love and gratitude for what is. Because and what is is always perfect until we come along with our story. 
That's exactly. Things, it should be different. And, you know, I just want to say that, you know, when you hear the words love and gratitude, it doesn't sound business, right? It doesn't sound like business. It doesn't sound, it sounds very light. But yet, I think people are going to understand as we get deeper into the discussions around energetics and where the true empowerment is, especially when we introduce you, for instance, in, into the language of power versus force, that love and gratitude and the frequency and the energy and the power that those concepts hold and that those energies bring is where the true power is, where the true wealth is, and where the true enduring happiness is. And, 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 and where we're going to find a lot of our solutions are, are founded not on fear and competition or ingratitude. And I feel that the Great Reset has been an opportunity for us to sober up. Because I think many on the planet have been on this huge drunk. Yeah, and I love what Byron Katie says, that we're drunk with our thinking before we're ever drunk from our drinking. <laughs> 100%. Thank you. And that's exactly, thank you, Byron Katie. And this is my thought is that, um, you know, um, we, we were getting so high and unbalanced and ungrounded and reactive and judgmental um, and polarized that I think planet uh, as a global planetary consciousness, it was either uh, <clears throat> continued on that road, which is to me is very dark and dire and unhappy and fragmented and the same old, same old, or mm -hmm. we change, we change, we get a new normal and we go into the great reset from within. Yeah. And we can have new. that. There's nothing new. It's, it's nothing new. We've been doing it since the beginning of time. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just feel that it's such an exciting time right now. And therefore, finding the Guru within to me is an opportunity to reclaim our soul consciousness and become the masters of who we are and recognize that we are co-created in the universe and we're co-creators. And what that does is it allows me to take accountability and let go yeah. of blame. That's a yeah. huge huge theme. I think yeah. the Great Reset has given us the opportunity to choose. Either we're going to be blaming and victims or we're going to take accountability and be victors. And ask and ourselves, what's the gift in this situation? Exactly. I haven't felt more grounded and clear and in a strange way peaceful. Mm -hmm. While everything was so challenged, my business, my I mean, I wrote a book and got it ready and then couldn't do much with it because everything was shut, shut down. down. So, uh, and yes, there was the angst that one has in human consciousness and, and all the resentment and the anger and everything, but it, I was able to quickly bring myself back to that place of mm -hmm. do I want to, from the outside in, determine mm -hmm. what I do, how I feel, or do I go back to the truth that, you know, how I perceive reality is what my reality is. And then get into exercising that muscle of yeah. approaching things from the inside out. And of course, my uh, love of meditation and, you know, the f growing up meditating and praying and, and yeah. my 40 plus years of meditating and teaching meditation um, has been a great asset because I was able to use that tool and we're going to happily share how people can use that tool yeah. to establish a communication direct line to their higher power to their knowledge to their inner guru to the god within themselves to the christ light which lives within themselves to the krishna consciousness yeah. okay uh, it's really an amazing time for us to put aside our differences to recognize that we're individual but not separate. Mm -hmm. And that we can move forward in such a powerfully unified way 
by acknowledging our individuality and celebrating it, not erasing it, but not using it as a weapon either yeah. to divide, yeah. right? For sure. And I, I love, you know, when you, when you truly tap into your, your inner guru guidance system, um, you'll never be led astray by your own personal guidance system. Never. Never. No. It cannot. Never. It, yeah. It's only when I get in the way and I don't listen and I, I try to, you know, fool with the recipe, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think, what happened? Well, you fooled with the recipe. Like, so really the work to me of living spirituality in another way to put this is 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 just learning to listen learning how to listen learning to trust what we're hearing especially when it doesn't fit and it sounds like it's crazy because i can't see around the corner and i don't seem to want to trust so of course we'll yeah. be doing a lot of episodes on the controlaholic within right yeah. and uh, yeah. and uh, and and that's the journey that's the process we, the psychological foundations are really key to explore. The emotional body, however, is what fuels our psyche. So it's very important to understand how that interplay is. Um, and then there's a psychobiology of the body, because as a man thinketh. So yes. what you're feeling, seeing, thinking, and how you perceive something immediately starts a cascade of processes in your system. Yeah. Okay. And, and molecules of emotion. There you go, the molecules of emotion. And so when we start to understand how our mind and body is and never was separate, that was just a concept, that our emotions fuel the process and, and our soul, our spirit created this whole scenario as an opportunity for us to learn and grow. It's a holodeck, it's a matrix within which our life is perfectly playing out for us to learn individually what we're here to learn. Are we able to embrace that even though we don't like it? That's the yeah. question I'd like people to go away with today. Yeah. And then join us when we come back uh, with our next episode. And we will delve into um, how we can begin to navigate um, this whole journey and bring us on a path of solutions versus problems being the focus. So you can look at this series of 12 as being many facets of the same diamond. And we're going to look at uh, e this whole idea of the inner guru and the great reset and ultimately getting ourselves to that place of renewal. So start thinking about what renewal may look for you. What I'm sure within the, within the, program within the psyche and the consciousness of the tree in winter, the tree that has gotten ashen and, and dry and has no leaves and, and, and it just looks like it's not alive, but it's very much alive. Because on the inside, there's a vision, there's a template, there's a blueprint. And when it manages itself through the winter in a particular manner, from the inside, it draws nourishment which when it connects to the elements on the outside, the sun, the wind, you know, the, 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 the warmth, yeah. Yeah. you have this beautiful spring. You have flowers and trees and grasses and, and you know, you have such beauty. So we're no different than that, friends. We're no different than nature. World works in cycles. All this has happened before and it will happen again. Exactly. We get to be on this part of the roller coaster right now. I hope, uh, you're enjoying the ride, I am. At times yeah. I'm thinking it might be a bit too much. Am I a little too old for this? Maybe I don't enjoy it as much as I used to, but you know, it's all cycles. Look at nature. Nature lives in cycles. And it's not a bad thing that it sleeps in winter. Mm -hmm. And I can just understand that and embrace that and bring that nature back into my nature and accept that right now the great reset has been a time for me with great help from the outside world, which gave me permission to not do. It wanted me just to do nothing. And I went, no. thank you. No. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for helping me to do nothing. I really appreciate that privilege. 
and in the midst of that nothingness was a solitude. And in that solitude, I could listen more deeply to my inner knowing and voice, which unveiled even more um, amazing um, truths, things that had been hidden from me because I never looked, because I took the time, I was given the time to show up. So I want to encourage everyone to learn to ride the wave as opposed to the wave riding them. Yeah. And when you go within, you find the perfection, you know, that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. As Yogananda says, everything is as is because the universe is as is. Don't struggle against the universe, you know. And then today I was rereading Think and Grow Rich in uh, Napoleon Hill's great book, and he said, don't look for opportunities in the far distance of space and time, but embrace them right where you are because where you are already has the perfection and the balance. And this is what we don't, we fail to see that so often. But when we can really go within and tap into that guru within and sit in that presence, we find that everything is perfect until we come along with the story. That's right. And you know, the saints that preceded us and the, from every tradition, of course, keep kept on reiterating that. And uh, uh, I would like to wrap up this episode today with um, a quote that I have in my book in the, uh, the last chapter by Rumi. Of course, Rumi, mm -hmm. the world-renowned, timeless um, Sufi poet. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing how this poet, within a couple of lines, could encapsulate, I think, what you and I have been going on about for about an hour. So let me um, share this thought. And I think it really captures what, Steve, you and I have been uh, exploring together and imploring um, our friends, our brothers and sisters out there who are going to join us on this journey to consider uh, and to see how it may work for them. And here's what Rumi said. I have been a seeker and I still am. But I stopped asking the books and the stars. I started listening to the teachings of my soul. Lovely. So looking forward to listening together. Um, as always, Steve, really enjoy our time together. I think we could yeah, just sure. go on and on, and but we better stop. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, look, look really forward to bringing more thoughts um, for, for our friends. And please, friends, um, drop us a note. Touch in with your thoughts, your questions, your stories, your ideas. And... Um, we really, really look forward to um, uh, learning as much from you as I hopefully you can learn through this, these dialogues and uh, this fun we're going to have together. So I'd like to close off by just saying a favorite saying of mine from the Vedic Hindu tradition, which basically means may peace be with you. And that is Om Shanti. We trust you found practical value in this podcast and will enthusiastically share it with others in your circle. And if you are so moved, leave us a review or write a post on social tagging hashtag Chai Chat Podcast and we will show our appreciation. Promise. Tarun Puri and Steve Harvey welcome you to join us for a Chai Chat at all of our live events and more. Connect with us with your questions, topic suggestions and reviews at info at chaichatpodcast.com.